The Optolume BPH catheter system is a minimally invasive drug-coated urology balloon used to perform a transurethral anterior commiserotomy of the prostate. The Optolume BPH catheter system is comprised of a pre-dilation balloon catheter and a post-dilation drug-coated balloon catheter. The device is inserted through the outer sheath of a rigid cystoscope and can be positioned in a side-by-side -side fashion with a rigid or flexible cystoscope. Both balloons have a proprietary design with a neck separating two lobes. The balloon neck is reinforced to prevent diameter growth during inflation. The double lobe design allows the balloon to seat in the bladder neck during inflation and helps prevent migration of the balloon into the bladder. The pre-dilation and the drug-coated balloon catheters are identical, with the only difference being the drug-coated balloon is coated with the active pharmaceutical ingredient, paclitaxel. Paclitaxel is a proven anti-proliferative drug that has been used in chemotherapy since the early 1990s and in percutaneous coronary interventions since 2004. Since that time, it has been used in millions of patients worldwide in various applications, including tens of thousands of Optolume drug-coated balloons for urethral strictures. As a mitotic inhibitor, Paclitaxel's mechanism of action works by preventing cell division and migration, stopping new tissue growth, and fibrotic scarring. Early data from the Optolume BPH device looks promising. Four-year results from the Everest One first-in-man study show symptom scores that were significantly improved from baseline, with this improvement maintained through the four-year follow-up. In a cohort of 80 patients, QMAX improved from 10.9 milliliters per second at baseline to 17.2 milliliters per second at four years. There was no change in sexual function as measured by the IIEF overall satisfaction score or the MSHQ EJD satisfaction bother score. Two-year outcomes from a randomized double-blinded and sham controlled trial confirmed experience from the first in-man study with immediate and sustained improvement in symptoms and flow rate. In a cohort of 100 patients randomized to receive Optolum, QMAX improved from 8.9 milliliters per second at baseline to 19 milliliters per second at two years. There was no change in sexual function as measured by the IIEF overall satisfaction score or the MSHQ EJD satisfaction bother score. When selecting the appropriate balloon for patient anatomy, sizing is determined based on prostatic urethral length, PUL. The PUL should be obtained from transrectal ultrasound. The truss measurement should be taken from the distal edge of the bladder neck to the proximal edge of the external sphincter. Once an accurate truss measurement has been taken, the balloon size should be determined by using the following table. This sizing grid was developed to ensure full dilation of the enlarged transition zone of the prostate while maintaining an appropriate margin of safety to avoid dilating the external urethral sphincter. Lengths of less than 32 millimeters should not be considered. When preparing for an Optolum BPH procedure, the operating room should be set up with the following equipment available. The Optolum BPH catheter system includes the pre-dilation and drug-coated balloons. Each are individually packaged in a double pouch configuration. The outer foil pouch is for protection from light and moisture, not for sterility. This package should be opened and immediately discarded. The inner Tyvek pouch should then be opened to allow transfer of the device to the sterile field. The outer surface of the Tyvek pouch is not sterile and should not be dumped into the sterile field. The distal end of the catheter is designed to pair with an inflation device via a TUI Bors connector. To begin the procedure, assemble and advance a rigid cystoscope with a minimum sheath size of 19.5 French through the urethra and into the bladder. Remove the optics and bridge, leaving an open pathway through the rigid sheath into the bladder. Place a thumb over cystoscope sheath to ensure adequate fluid volume in bladder during balloon insertion. Remove the balloon protector sheath from the balloon catheter. Insert the balloon catheter through the rigid cystoscope sheath and into the bladder. Remove the rigid cystoscope sheath and reassemble with bridge and optics. Attach the TUI Borst adapter with inflation device to the catheter shaft. Insert the reassembled cystoscope transurethrally up to the external sphincter in a side-by-side -side manner with the balloon catheter. Locate the external sphincter with a cystoscope 
and position the tip of the cystoscope so visualization of the external sphincter can be maintained throughout the procedure. Adjust the position of the balloon by pushing or pulling the catheter shaft until the proximal balloon lobe is located in the prostatic urethra. Proper positioning is achieved when the distal tip of the opaque balloon bond is placed at the external sphincter and the blue balloon positioning marker is approximately 1 cm distal to the external sphincter. To confirm proper positioning, perform a wiggle test by inflating the balloon to approximately 2 atmospheres and gently wiggling the catheter shaft. There will be tactile confirmation when the balloon is locked into place at the bladder neck. The balloon will be able to be pushed proximally into the bladder if it is not positioned correctly. If that occurs, deflate the balloon and reposition using the steps above. Once proper positioning is confirmed via the wiggle test, slowly inflate the balloon up to 4 atmospheres. Do not inflate balloon higher than 4 atmospheres, which is its rated burst pressure. The purpose of the pre-dilation balloon is to initiate the anterior commiserotomy. A commissure can generally be confirmed by a drop in pressure, indicating that the balloon is no longer being constrained. A spike in heart rate or blood pressure may also be observed. Leave the balloon inflated for a dwell time of one minute. After one minute, deflate the balloon by applying aspiration with the inflation device. When the balloon is completely deflated, slowly withdraw the balloon and visually confirm the anterior commiserotomy using a cystoscope. If a commiserotomy still has not been achieved, reinsert predilation balloon and again inflate to rated burst pressure. A longer dwell time may also be incorporated at this time to help achieve the commiserotomy. Do not exceed three inflation cycles to rated burst pressure. If commiserotomy has not been achieved after three attempts, proceed to dilation with the drug-coated balloon. Once the anterior commiserotomy has been confirmed, the steps will be repeated again using the drug-coated balloon. When removing the sheath and handling the drug-coated balloon catheter, care must be taken to maintain the integrity of the drug coating. Minimize handling and do not touch the balloon. Do not wipe the balloon with any wet, dry, or lubricated gauze. The caudé tip of the catheter may be lubricated if needed, however, to assist with passage through the rigid cystoscope sheath. Do not use any solvent which could damage the integrity of the drug-coated balloon. Insert balloon catheter through cystoscope sheath and allow coating to hydrate for one minute prior to inflation. Position balloon in the same manner as the predilation balloon, confirming proper positioning by placing the distal tip of the opaque balloon bond at the external sphincter. The blue balloon positioning marker will be approximately one centimeter distal to the external sphincter. Inflate balloon to two atmospheres and perform wiggle tests to confirm proper positioning. Once positioning is confirmed, inflate balloon to four atmospheres. Maintain pressure for a dwell time of 10 minutes. Do not top off the inflation device. Pressure may be observed to drop during dwell time. This is normal and does not need to be brought back up to rated burst pressure. During dwell time, Ensure that the catheter is prepped and ready to be inserted immediately upon deflation of the balloon. A stat lock, tape, or leg band should also be available to put the catheter on traction. Deflate balloon by applying aspiration with an inflation device following the same steps as with the predilation balloon. Ensure balloon is completely deflated and gently pull on the catheter shaft to withdraw the catheter from the patient's body. Dispose of properly in accordance with accepted medical practice and applicable local regulations for biohazard waste. Insert a Foley catheter. A 22 French 2-way catheter may be utilized or a 24 French 3-way hematuria catheter may be used in conjunction with CBI. Fill the balloon with at least 30 cc of fluid and drain the bladder. Place catheter on moderate traction to provide additional tamponade effect. A gauze compression knot at the tip of the penis may also be considered to maintain traction during post-operative patient positioning. Using a Tumi syringe, flush the bladder with sterile saline or water until the effluent returns clear and all clots are evacuated. Length of catheter traction time is at physician discretion but generally recommended for at least 30 minutes. If CBI is utilized, typically administer for 30 to 60 minutes. Hand flush the bladder again prior to discharge to expel any small clots that may have formed in the bladder. 
The Foley catheter should remain in place for a minimum of two days to allow adequate healing and absorption of the drug into the prostatic adenoma. Consider sending patient home with catheter affixed to leg band, stat lock, or held with gauze at the meatus in order to provide continuous mild compression. Consider administering anti-inflammatory and anticholinergics at physician's discretion. Men should abstain from sex or use barrier contraception for 30 days post-treatment to avoid exposure of sexual partner to paclitaxel. Men with partners of childbearing potential should use a highly effective contraception to avoid fathering children for at least 12 months post-procedure. The Optolume system is the first ever minimally invasive BPH treatment that can provide significant improvement in symptoms and flow rate without cutting, burning, steaming, lasering, or leaving a permanent implant behind. Visit us online at labry.com for more information.